And I testify that such is possible. Anger, Satan's tool, is destructive in so many ways. I believe most of us are familiar with the sad account of Thomas B. Marsh and his wife Elizabeth. Brother Marsh was one of the first modern-day apostles called after the Church was restored to the earth. He eventually became president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. While the Saints were in far west, Missouri, Elizabeth Marsh, Thomas's wife, and her friend, Sister Harris, decided they would exchange milk in order to make more cheese than they otherwise could. To be certain all was done fairly, they agreed that they should not save what were called the strippings, but that the milk and strippings should all go together. Strippings came at the end of the milking and were richer in cream. Sister Harris was faithful to the agreement, but Sister Marsh, desiring to make some especially delicious cheese, saved a pint of strippings from each cow and sent Sister Harris the milk with no strippings. This caused the two women to quarrel. When they could not settle their differences, the matter was referred to the home teachers to settle. They found Elizabeth Marsh guilty of failure to keep her agreement. She and her husband were upset with the decision, and the matter was then referred to the bishop for a church trial. The bishop's court decided that the strippings were wrongfully saved, and Sister Marsh had violated her covenant with Sister Harris. Thomas Marsh appealed to the High Council, and the men comprising this council confirmed the bishop's decision. He then appealed to the First Presidency of the Church. Joseph Smith and his counselors considered the case and upheld the decision of the High Council. Elder Thomas B. Marsh, who sided with his wife through all of this, became angrier with each successive decision. So angry, in fact, that he went before a magistrate and swore that the Mormons were hostile toward the state of Missouri. His affidavit led to, or at least was a factor, in Governor Lilburn Boggs' cruel extermination order, which resulted in over 15,000 saints being driven from their homes with all the terrible suffering and consequent death that followed. All of this occurred because of a disagreement over the exchange of milk and cream. After 19 years of rancor and loss, Thomas B. Marsh made his way to the Salt Lake Valley and asked Brigham Young for forgiveness. Brother Marsh also wrote to Heber C. Kimball, first counselor in the First Presidency, of the lesson he had learned. Said Brother Marsh, the Lord could get along very well without me. And he lost nothing by my falling out of the ranks. But oh, what I have lost. Riches, greater riches than all this world or many planets like this could afford. Apropos are the words of the poet John Greenleaf Whittier. Of all sad words of tongue or pen, the saddest are these. It might have been. My brethren, we're all susceptible to those feelings which, if left unchecked, can lead to anger. We experience displeasure or irritation or antagonism, and if we so choose, we lose our temper and become angry with others. Ironically, those others are often members of our own families, the people we really love the most. Many years ago, I read the following Associated Press dispatch, which appeared in the newspaper, and I quote, An elderly man disclosed at the funeral of his brother, with whom he had shared from early manhood a small one-room cabin near Conestale, New York, that following a quarrel, the two brothers had divided the room in half with a chalk line, and neither 
had crossed the line or spoken a word to the other since that day, 62 years before. Close quote. Just think of the consequence of that anger. What a tragedy. May we make a conscious decision each time such a decision must be made to refrain from anger and to leave unsaid the harsh and hurtful things we may be tempted to say. I love the words of the hymn written by Elder Charles W. Penrose, who served in the Quorum of the Twelve and in the First Presidency during the early years of the 20th century. Here they are. School life feelings, O oh, my brother, train thy warm, impulsive soul. Do not let its emotions smother, but let wisdom's voice control. School life feelings, there's power in the cool, collected mind. Passion shatters reason's tower, makes the clearest vision blind. Each of us is a holder of the priesthood of God. The oath and covenant of the priesthood pertains to all of us to those who hold the Melchizedek priesthood. It is a declaration of our requirement to be faithful and obedient to the laws of God and to magnify the callings which come to us. To those who hold the Aaronic priesthood, it is a pronouncement concerning future duty and responsibility that you may prepare yourselves here and now. This oath and covenant is set forth by the Lord in these words, For whoso is faithful unto the obtaining these two priesthoods of which I have spoken, and the magnifying their calling, are sanctified by the Spirit unto the renewing of their bodies. They become the sons of Moses, of Aaron, and the seed of Abraham, and the Church, and Kingdom, and the elect of God. And also, all they who receive this priesthood receive me, saith the Lord. For he that receiveth my servants receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth my Father, and he that receiveth my Father receiveth my Father's kingdom. Therefore all that my Father hath shall be given unto him. Brethren, great promises await us if we are true and faithful to the oath and covenant of this precious priesthood which we hold. May we be worthy, sons of our Heavenly Father. May we ever be exemplary in our homes and faithful in keeping all of the commandments, that we may harbor no animosity toward any man but rather be peacemakers, ever remembering the Savior's admonition, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Close quote. This is my plea tonight at the conclusion of this great priesthood meeting, and it is also my humble and sincere prayer. For I love you, brethren with all my heart and soul, and I pray our Heavenly Father's blessing to attend each of you in your lives, in your home, in your heart, in your soul. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.